Brother Asif asks about a very common question that unfortunately only those who are ignorant, who do not know about the Islamic sciences come and put forward. And the question is, we are confident that the Quran is the word of Allah Azza wa Jal and that it is 100% authentic no one can tamper or play with it but we are not as confident when it comes to the prophetic sunnah the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. due to the fact that Bukhari may Allah be pleased with him and have mercy on his soul came so many years after the Prophet ﷺ, and so the other hadiths or muhaddithin and some of them say that this hadith is authentic and this one is weak and this one is fabricated etc so what to say to them first of all we say to them that you tell me what do you think is the appropriate way of handling this he will tell you mm, after i didn't think of that i was waiting for you to lecture me but now you've turning the tables and asking me what do i think I think that we should uh, ignore the hadith. I said, okay, alhamdulillah, we ignore the hadith. What are the consequences of that? The consequences are that people would turn to the Quran, but the Quran doesn't give them all the answers they have for the questions. It doesn't give them enough information because Allah Azza wa Jal detailed the answers and the information in the Sunnah. So if you say that because I'm not so comfortable with the Hadith, you say, I will rely only on the Quran. I said, okay, what about the prayers? How many prayers per day and night? I said, five. How, how do you know there are five? I said, people are praying like this. So how do you know that people are right? How many rak'ahs in Fajr? How many rak'ahs in Maghrib? How many rak'ahs in Asr? How many sajda per each rak'ah? How many rak'ah or rukur in each unit? What to say when to recite the Fatiha? Why recite the Fatiha loud or not silent? All of this is from the Sunnah. And you can build thousands, literally thousands of similar questions when it comes to fasting, to zakat, to hajj, when it comes to transactions, when it comes to prescribed punishments, when it comes to rulings, when it comes to marriage, divorce, idda, when it comes to uh, rada, so many things, and the sky is the limit. Without the sunnah, you cannot understand the Quran. So now they are stuck between a rock and a hard place. They say yes, but then they don't want the sunnah. Why don't you want the sunnah? Because the sunnah governs their lives and makes those who want to pursue their desires and lusts make their lives difficult. When it's with the Quran, yes, I think, okay, wine is haram. It's mentioned in the Quran. But if I drink a glass of vodka or a tequila, then it's okay, it's not wine. Wine is from grapes. This is the Arabic language. Look, it's mentioned in the Quran. So they find their way out through only focusing on the Quran and misinterpreting the verses because they're not doing it through the proper channel which is the Sunnah of the Prophet that clarifies what is ambiguous to us. And this is why Allah sent us the Prophet Now, second of all, they have failed miserably when they say we're comfortable with the Quran. If you, receive, if you recite and read the Quran, you will find it in black and white. That the Prophet said, that Allah Azza wa said, that whatever the Prophet brings you, you have to obey. And whatever he prohibits you, you have to refrain. And Allah tells us, obey the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Pro Allah Azza wa mentions al-hikmah, which is the prophetic saying, the wisdom that is mentioned in the houses of the Prophet's uh, 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 wives, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah be pleased with them. So many verses of the Quran telling you to follow the Prophet and to make him your judge. How is this possible if it were not to be referred to the Sunnah of the Prophet So this is a crystal clear point, my friend Asif, and I hope this answers your question.